Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, it's gonna be a little bit different than uh, some of the other videos I do, which is mostly solving various types of math problems at the middle school, uh, high school, and college level. Here, we're gonna talk about reprogramming yourself for uh, math success. So hopefully, this title is kind of interesting to you, and hopefully, you're watching this video because this is critical, okay? This is gonna be really important for a lot of you out there that are struggling with math. But here is my question to all of you uh, listening. So if you are successful in math, put in few, a few reasons into the comment section why you think you are successful in math. And uh, try to go a little bit more detailed other than you are a math genius, uh, you like math. I mean, those are reasons, you know, but try to, you know, really kind of think about it. You know, like, why do you think you are successful? And likewise, for those of you that struggle in math, why do you think you struggle in math? Okay, maybe uh, it's because you had a bad math teacher or maybe you didn't care about school. Whatever the case is, put that into the comment section because this goes to the psychology of learning mathematics, okay? Now, before I get into my little uh, spiel here, I wanna tell you that you can absolutely be successful in mathematics, but it's all relative, right? Does that mean uh, you can go get yourself a PhD in mathematics? Well, you know, maybe not necessarily. Uh, I'm just being honest with you because it get, becomes very, very difficult at the higher ends of, you know, anything, anything you do, right? Like sports, you know, can you be a better baseball player? Yes, but can you maybe uh, go to the World Series one day? Maybe you can, but maybe, you know, it might be difficult for most people. So what I'm talking about here is relative math success, but when it comes to, uh, you know, school, I'm talking about elementary, middle, and high school, and even college, for most of you out there that have to take a math course and pass a math uh, course as part of um, a bigger, you know, journey that you're on, i.e. to maybe to get a math degree or to complete a, uh, you know, a technical school, whatever the case is, for most, the grand majority of you out there, yes, you can be successful in math, i.e. learn what you need to learn in order to move on with your uh, bigger game plan in life, okay? And for those of you that love math, you can continue to learn as much math as you possibly want. And yes, you can even go get that PhD in mathematics if you so desire. But uh, again, uh, a lot of this has to do with your current psychology. So let's go ahead and talk about how to reprogram yourself for math success. Now, if you just think about the title, reprogram yourself for math success, you know, is this applicable to those of you that are already successful in math? Well, you know, maybe, but most of you already have a good program going because you are experiencing success. But maybe when you get to this next course, maybe you're gonna go into calculus and now you're gonna have a difficult time, right? This happens all the time where you're in an easy math course and now you get to a challenging math course and now you're like, oh my goodness, I'm in a crisis. Well, let's talk about all this right now. Okay, so how do you program yourself for math success? Well, you need to understand this big, big picture concept is what you're think, how you think about yourself has a major impact on your ability to learn, okay? That's huge, all right? I've been teaching math for decades, and um, you know, I've gone through you know, a lot myself personally, so it's not just uh, you know, I practice what I do, teach. If I, I practice what I preach, I practice what I teach because, you know, it's worked for me in life and I see patterns of success, you know, not just in math, but in anything difficult. So if math is difficult for you, well, you know, it could be difficult, but you still could be successful in it. But here is the first thing that you need to start doing. If you are struggling in math, you have to get rid of this little phrase, uh, this doubt that I can't do this or, you know, internally in your subconscious mind, if you're thinking anything along these lines, like I'm not smart enough, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, you know, this person to the left of me is better than me. Uh, this person to the right of me, you know, they're smarter than I am. You know, uh, if I didn't, you know, uh, fail out of school, if I didn't have that bad math teacher, you know, I just can't do this because of X, Y, Z. You have to get rid of this thinking, okay, right here. This is the number one thing. You have to make a decision, and you're going to have to change your psychology. I can't. Because here's the thing. If you're going to let math defeat you, in other words, uh, you know, I'm kind of going to be very um, direct here. If you're going to be defeated by 
an algebra course, okay? What happens when real life happens, okay? When you have a personal crisis, a health crisis, or you're, you know, you have a family situation or a major, you know, you get laid off from your job or whatever, something bigger, all right? Well, what you, you know, anytime you do something difficult in a math class, if you find it difficult, if you are just telling yourself, I'm not capable of handling this situation, well, what you're practicing is how to, you know, quit more or less, okay? Now, I hate to kind of say it in those terms, but that's kind of how it is, all right? Uh, it is what it is. And I'll tell you right now, you know, we all have a lot of personal experiences that we can draw upon. Now, I'm going to say this right up front. There are caveats to what I'm talking about here. In other words, there's always exceptions. If you are dealing with a severe learning disorder or something like that, that's going to make this much more complex. So this is, again, directed to uh, the kind of the um, average student out there that just, you know, is struggling with math, that doesn't like math, and just but need, now needs to pass math, right? But there's a lot of doubt in there. Because so that, that right there, that kind of situation uh, really constitutes the majority of students that struggle in math fall under that category, okay? But again, there's exceptions for those people that are dealing with things that are more, you know, extenuating circumstances, all right? So that, you know, I'm going to kind of carve out, uh, but even uh, what I'm talking about here can apply to those people as well. Now, a little bit about my background. In a formal life, I was a U.S. Marine. I also served as a, a naval officer, but uh, beyond that, I've also done a lot of other uh, crazy, difficult things in my life. But here's the deal, like some, some of the um, things that I learned, especially in the Marine Corps, and if you were in the military or if you went through something difficult, that this kind of thinking, I can't do it, uh, you know, I'm not able. Well, listen, you know, when you go through an experience like being in the Marine Corps, they're going to show you, they're going to force you that you can, okay? That's why, you know, those kind of experiences are so powerful that I'm telling you right now, if you needed to, if your life depended upon learning algebra, you can do it, okay? So the question is really not about uh, whether you, I can't learn this. You can learn this. It's about whether you want to, okay? So that's the next thing is do you want to, all right? So you can, all right? So you got to get rid of this. I can't. And you're like, don't, that's not an, ex uh, an excuse, all right? Don't, that's not part of why you're not currently successful in math. It's not because you can't, because you can, you absolutely can. Now it comes down to, do you want to, all right? What's your level of commitment? What's your level of, of desire to be successful in math? If it's an absolute, if it's like 10,000%, like, yes, this is the most important thing, you're going to make it happen, right? So, you know, a lot of uh, students are like, yeah, I just can't, I can't do math. I really struggle with it. But then I ask them, how much are you studying? Well, I study 10 minutes a day. Uh, are you watching, you know, are you doing all the videos in order? Are you, are you taking notes in class? Well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know, again, it comes down to your level of desire. So how bad do you want to? And I'm telling you right now, there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Your math is a process, okay? And you can do this, but how bad do you want to do this, right? So if you want to learn math and you really, really want to learn math and you really want to be successful in math, then you absolutely can, all right? So this is the first thing you need to kind of take inventory in your psychology is like, hey, you know, whatever excuses. And you may had uh, your last three teachers might have been terrible math teachers. Does that happen? Absolutely. Does that hurt you in terms of your, um, are you behind the power curve because of that situation? Yes. Okay. Uh, but can you do something about it? Yes. Right. Do you want to do something about it? That's the more most important question here. So when I talk about reprogramming yourself for math success, I'm not saying, hey, here's a shortcut recipe, uh, you know, and you just do this one, two, three, and magically you're going to be successful in math. And again, success means what? Well, you're able to learn, right? You're going to, you know, pass a, um, a math course. You're going to get to the level you need to get to for your goals. If you want to get you know, a business degree that you're able to pass, you know, finance, uh, math, or basic calculus, all that kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about here. All right. So. Now that you kind of already know you can uh, learn math, you are capable of doing it, and if you want to do it, then what is next? Well, the next thing is you have to understand the difference between leading indicators, all right, 
bleeding and lagging. All right, so hopefully I'm spelling this correct. So come to me for math help, not necessarily, uh, you know, grammar and spelling help. But of course, you know, for me, am I capable of being a great speller? Yes, I am. Do I want to? Well, it could be quite frankly, uh, it could be uh, quite honest with you. Uh, you know, I just let uh, spell check and all this fancy AI uh, kind of do that work for me. But anyways, so let's talk about leading and lagging indicators here as part of reprogramming yourself. Most of you are stressed out about your ability to learn math because you're focused on lagging indicators. What does that mean? This is a lagging indicator is what is going to, um, uh, it's basically what is already happened. Okay. This is the past. All right. Okay. Leading is now. All right. I'll get it, kind of get into this in a second. So you look at the past, you're like that, you're looking at all this track record, this evidence of you maybe failing in math, struggling in math, or whatever the case is. And you're saying, you basically are using those lagging indicators as, you know, um, you know, uh, pretty much as, uh, as to kind of describe your current situation. All right. Well, you haven't kind of corrected your d deficiencies. Now, if you're struggling in the math, that means you have things to work on. All right. So that's where we need to focus on. We need to focus on leading indicators. Like what can you do right now? What, you sh uh, what can you be, what activities, what actions do you need to take right now in order to create a different future? OK, because somewhere, you know, sometime in the future, uh, this now part is going to be your past. I don't know if you kind of follow me here, but what you do right now is going to affect the future. You cannot affect the past, especially if you struggled with the past. So stop looking at the past. That's a lagging indicator. OK, what you need to do is look towards the future. And as you look, start, you know, doing the right things, you know, a year from now, a month from now your past is going to start looking better and better. Okay. So stop looking at the past that has nothing to do with anything. However, what we want to do is just try to get an assessment of what you know and don't know. Okay. So here I know these things here. I do not know this. And if your situation is, I don't know anything. Hey, that's perfectly fine because at least we know on this little ladder where you need to start. Okay. You need to start here at the very, very bottom and then just work your way up. You climb the ladder. Okay. Or you kind of think of it as a stair uh, case. Maybe you're right here, but maybe you're right here. It doesn't make a difference as long as you learn how to climb up a, uh, you know, take one step forward. That's what counts. And I'll tell you, this is why I kind of uh, refer back to my Marine Corps experience because in the Marine Corps, you know, when you're climbing gigantic steep hills or doing crazy, um, obstacles, you cannot look at the entire obstacle or you can't look at the entire mountain. You're like, Oh my goodness, I have this huge mountain to climb or I have this huge, scary obstacle to climb. What you have to focus on is one step at a time. You got to focus on, you know, getting through the next five seconds. That's what you have to focus on. So right now, stop looking at the past and start thinking about what do I need to focus on right now? Well, what you need to do to be successful in mathematics is you need a lot of kind of, you need a game plan, right? You need to be uh, uh, constructing or developing the right habits. Okay. So what are these right, uh, right habits? Well, let's talk about uh, those right now. And these are leading indicators. If you do practice these things every day, you are going to just, you're not going to be able to fail because you're doing the right things. And over time, cumulatively, you will be successful in math. And the time it takes for uh, for those of you out there is going to be completely dependent upon your motivation, how much time you have, what kind, you know, what level of math you're dealing with, uh, you know, your kind of current skill set. But let's talk about some of the things you absolutely need to be doing, focusing on as far as daily actions to be successful in math. So this is what your day should look like if you are trying to be successful in mathematics. Okay. So let's just take a typical day. If you happen to be studying math or, you know, maybe you're uh, taking a math course. So the first thing is you need great clear instruction. All right. Now, hopefully you have an excellent math teacher that explains things in an easy to understand way. You may or may not. Okay. So you might be saying, Oh, I'm stuck with this teacher. They don't really explain things that well. Well, listen, you're going to have to take some initiative and go get some help. Okay. So if your teacher is not teaching in a way that you like and understand, 
Well, you still need to work with that teacher, but you may need to find um, someone uh, or something to help you beyond that. Now, like in my math help program, I have full, complete instruction. So if you like my teaching style, well, then find a program like mine or something else or a tutor. There's resources out there, but you need great instruction. You cannot learn math with, you, you definitely don't want to learn math by just, you know, reading a book. That's not going to work. And again, we're talking about, uh, for, you know, this video is directed towards those of you that are having a tough time with math. So you need great instruction. And what that means is you need to uh, find a teacher that you actually understand uh, when they teach. Okay, so you can, you know, oh, like, oh, I understand what they're saying. So that's the first step. That's probably the most important uh, important step is finding a teacher that you, uh, you know, basically understand that they can explain things in a way that you get. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to learn how to take awesome math notes, okay? So you just can't just like listen to the teacher and be like, wow, that's fascinating. I get everything they're saying. Well, if you're not writing things down, you're not doing yourself any uh, favors here, okay? Note taking is critical, right? You might be saying, ah, it's kind of like old school. You know, I could just print out notes. I could just, you know, use technology. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you need to get a piece of paper and a pencil because the activity, okay, of you writing things down, listening is this is a very rich learning environment okay in order to take great math notes right you have to be listening you have to be seeing these are all receptions or these are all different ways that information comes into your brain as a matter of fact let's kind of just draw it this way real quick so here you are you have to take great math notes you are seeing you are listening you are writing which is kind of kinesthetic all this goes towards retention, okay? This is critical, critical, critical. Plus, you need a reference, and you need to make your notes personalized. Like, oh, yeah, I get this here. And then you can kind of put in some additional comments like, oh, yeah, do it this way, da, da, da. You write things down in a way that makes sense to you, okay? You write everything the, teacher's down, uh, the teacher puts down on the board as well. So note-taking is a skill, and you got to practice this, uh, you know, every day, okay? All right, so... I spend a lot of time on note taking because it is that important. So you got to again have a great math teacher and then be taking great math notes. So let's go on to the other obvious things. The next thing is uh, is what? Well, you got to do all the homework. I mean, all the homework, all that kind hundred percent. Because when your teacher gives you homework, you know, might say, oh, do problems one through five, you know, seven through uh, uh, 10, and then 21 through 28, whatever the case is. The reason why they give you problems that are kind of all over the place if you're using a textbook is so you have a wide variety of um, challenges with this particular skill that you're learning. Now, what ends up happening is a lot of students, they're just, they're just lazy. Oh, I'll do one through five. These are easy. And then I'll just do just enough to turn in, in my homework and get full credit. You see, if that's your attitude towards learning, then, you know, you're going to be, you're going to continue to struggle in math. All right. So again, this comes back to, can you do this stuff? Yes. How bad do you want to be successful math? That's a question you have to answer for yourself. But if you're, you know, if you need to get through math, you need to be a hundred percent. Okay. Again, I go back to my Marine Corps days. There was no slacking. You know, it's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to accomplish this mission that in, in terms of our mind's eye, that that mission was going to get accomplished no matter what. OK, so that's the kind of the mentality you need to have. Like, I want to be successful no matter what. And you're going to have to work and put in the level of effort to make sure that happens. OK. And by the way, too, you got to get away from, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to get away from anybody who doubts you. All right. And I mean, anyone says, well, you, you're, you know, you're just not good in math. You know, you probably should stay away from this. And uh, unfortunately, all of you um, have had teachers that would say that you're uh, Billy. You're just not you should not go into math. Uh, you should just be an English major or you should just, you know, go into the trades. I mean, uh, teachers like that should not be in the classroom. OK, because they don't understand that you are more capable than you realize. And we all have much more potential than we think. So when it comes to homework, okay, this is not an optional thing. And sometimes you need to give yourself homework. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you like struggled with something in the past and you know that's important that you didn't quite get, then you're going to have to kind of do that additional extra practice all on your own. So you got to take that initiative and um, 
you know, really get into communication with your, um, you know, teacher, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind of brings me to my last point, and we'll kind of wrap up this video. And that is you need to kind of think for yourself, right? Think for yourself. In other words, yeah, you have a math teacher that's teaching you math, but you have to be your own math teacher to some degree, which means is you have to ask yourself, what what do I need to do for me personally uh, to help myself out? Okay, and that's going to be a case by case basis. Do I need a math tutor? Do I need to do extra uh, word problems? Do I need to move myself to another part of the classroom so this distracting person here doesn't keep messing me up when I want to take notes? You have to be proactive. You have to think for yourself. Should I go uh, see the teacher? You know, before school, after school. You know, whatever you need to do, you need to do, which means is you have to take responsibility for your situation. You just don't go into a, a classroom and be like, okay, it is the teacher's responsibility in order for me to learn. No, it's actually the reverse. It's your responsibility to get whatever information you need out of that teacher so you can learn. The teacher already knows this material. You're trying to learn it, okay? So you got to think for yourself. You have to take care of yourself and make yourself a priority, which means that you have to be constantly focused, right? And that's a huge word, focus, and almost, you know, kind of uh, encapsulate everything that I'm talking about here because you can't do any of this if you are distracted, okay? So put away the cell phone. You know, you can't, you know, there's this thing about multitasking. You know, I can, I can do some text messaging and check my social media and take great math notes. Believe me, I can do it. I can do it. No, you cannot do it, okay? Math, uh, like learning anything else, is a game of focus. So we're going to kind of keep it simple here. Um, but the main message uh, for those of you that are struggling in math is this. You can be successful in math, okay? The really quick comes down to how bad do you want to be successful in math, okay? And stop looking at your past. If your past has been, you know, tough, you know, for whatever reason, and a lot of this stuff could, you know, not even, you know, been your fault, okay? Some of it could have been your fault. Maybe you were like the class clown. Maybe you didn't really care about school, but now you care about school. Listen, that is the past. We're, we change and, and evolve as people. What you have to do is focus, again, that word focus, on your leading indicators, okay? These are the things that are going to, the actions you need to take that are going to construct your better future in mathematics, okay? Again, those things are uh, making sure that you get great math instruction, okay? Uh, so, you know, again, you may have to go find someone, take that initiative, take great math notes. This is so, 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 so important. By the way, if you need help, or if you want to check out my math notes, you can find links to those in the description of this video as well. Do all the homework and maybe additional practice problems that are beyond what the teacher's asking, and then think for yourself, okay? Kind of like take responsibility for what's going on. You do all of that stuff, I'm telling you right now, you will be uh, probably super successful in mathematics, but at a minimum, you will be able to pass any difficult math course that you might be taking. But uh, if you need additional help, if I can help you out with, uh, uh, you know, whether it be middle school math, high school math, or even college math, I have a ton of different math courses at my website. So you can check that stuff out. And I try to make videos like this to keep you motivated, keep you in the game, because the last thing you want to do is quit on yourself, right? You know, that's definitely don't do that. Uh, you know, just keep going. Okay. So that's the main message of this video. If this video inspired you even to the smallest uh, degree, make sure you like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.